It's World War II. It's time to make our bombing run. We've got ourselves a Wellington. Like a Wellington steak. Or is it Wellington beef? Don't. Hello, everybody. Welcome aboard. Welcome to Farm Borough. And aboard our Vickers Wellington. Ain't she a beaut? This aircraft is actually really a beaut. Not only is the exterior looking really nice. Yeah. Check out this interior. Oh, it looks beautiful. Spinners. Yay, it's a beautiful looking aircraft. We're, you know, we've had some we've had some good ones and we've had some bad ones. Yeah, this one is pretty darn nice looking. All right, the Vickers Wellington was a British twin-engine long-range medium bomber designed in the mid-1930s. It was widely used as a night bomber in the early years of the Second World War before being superseded as a bomber by the by the larger four-engine heavies, such as the Avro Lancaster. Still, nice-looking aircraft. Let's go ahead and power up our... Hold on, i got to figure out what, which one it is. There they go. Two Bristol Pegasus Mark 18 radial engines, 1,050 horsepower each. Ain't she a beaut? Ain't she loud? Ooh, there we go. All right. Let's get those flaps up. I did put them down while we were on the takeoff roll. Yeah, she looks sleek. She looks like a sleek aluminum air frame. Except for she's not. The Wellington continued to serve throughout the war in other duties, particularly as an anti-submarine aircraft. It was the only British bomber to pr be produced for the duration of the war and was still first-line equipment when the war ended. The Wellington used geodesic construction devised by Barnes Wallace, inspired by his work on airships, and previously used to build the single-engine Wesley Light Bomber. The fuselage was built from 1,650 elements consisting of aluminum alloy W-beams formed into a framework Wooden battens screwed to the aluminum were covered with Irish linen, which was treated with layers of dough, forming the outer skin of the aircraft. So she's got aluminum in her, but it's only the spars. What you see on the outside is Irish linen. Woohoo, flying sheep. <laughs> the metal lattice gave the structure strength because any one stringer could support some of the weight even from the opposite side of the aircraft. Blowing out one side's beams would still leave the aircraft as a whole intact. As a result, Wellingtons with, with huge areas of framework missing returned home when other types would not have survived. The dramatic effect was enhanced by the doped fabric skin burning off, leaving the naked frames exposed. Also, it would be very cold. The geodesic structure was strong and light for its size, which gave the Wellington a load and range to power ratio advantage over similar aircraft. Without sacrificing robustness or the protection of armor plate or self sealing fuel tanks. That's something that a lot of aircraft seem to decide they needed to sacrifice. I don't know why you do that, but hey, whatever. The construction took longer to build than other designs using monocoque construction, and it was difficult to cut holes in a fuselage to provide access or equipment fixtures. That can be a problem, but crew survivability or cutting the aircraft open, which would you prefer? I personally would prefer crew survivability. Air brakes, look at that, opens up our bomb bay. Woohoo, bombs away, we're gonna bomb Farnborough, yay. 
As a propaganda and morale-boosting exercise in October 1943, workers at Broughton Factory near Chester gave up their weekend to build Wellington No. LN-514, rushed by the clock. The bomber was assembled in 23 hours 50 minutes and took off after 24 hours 48 minutes, beating the record of 48 hours set by a factory in California. The bomber was usually built within 60 hours. The effort was filmed for the Ministry of Information for a newsreel Workers Weekend broadcast in Britain and America. The Wellington was superseded in the European theater and remained in operation through much of the war in the Middle East and in the Far East. Particularly effective with the South African Air Force in North Africa. This versatile aircraft also served anti-submarine duties with the 28th Squadron SAAF based in Takorandi, Gold Coast, now Ghana. In late in 1944, a radar-equipped Wellington uh, 14 from the 407 Squadron Royal Canadian Air Force was modified for use by the RAF's Fighter Interception Unit, as it would now be, des be described as what would now be described as an er airborne early warning and control aircraft. It operated at the altitude of 4,000 feet over the North Sea to control a de Havilland Mosquito and a Bristol Bue fighter, fighter, which seems odd to say that, but intercepting a Heinkel HE-111 bomber group flying from Dutch air bases and carrying out airborne launches of V-1 bombs. The FIU operators on the Wellington would search for the HE-111 aircraft climbing the launch altitude, then direct the Bue fighters to the bombers while the Mosquito would attempt to intercept the V-1 if launched. Think about that. 1940s, and we already have airborne warning to control. This is a beautiful aircraft. It really is. Uh, the crew is six. Maximum speed is 235 miles an hour at 15,500 feet. That's 378 kilometers an hour at 4,730 feet, uh, meters, sorry. Range is 2,550 miles, that is 4,106 kilometers. She is armed with six to eight 303 Browning machine guns, two in the nose, two in the tail, two in the waist positions. That's six, but you can also get eight if you notice my back end here. Look at that. I got four guns on that rear. Woo! Quad gun. Bombs, 4,500 pounds, that's 2,041 kilograms. Things that make you go boom. All right, we're going to try to land this beautiful bird without destroying it. And we're going to get inside. We're going to look again at our beautiful cockpit. Okay, we have a hole in the bottom, you'd think. No, no, we don't have a hole in the bottom. We have a window in the bottom of our plane. Woohoo! Windows. <laughs> windows. Windows on the world, people. Windows on the world. All right, let's, uh, let's get our numbers done here. Shift one. There we go. Close personal look at our gauges. Two, there's a modern GPS, or not GPS, radio. Bleh. There is a GPS. Compass. Uh, fuel, there we go. Burp. <laughs> uh, timer, that's good. There we got our electrical. And that's it. That's all we got. All right, we're gonna try to make this landing. I'm open sometime soon. All right, let's uh, put a notch of flaps on. Let's go ahead and drop those gears. We've been idling around at a low speed, so I've been flying really nose up on this plane. Farm Bro has a nice long runway, so we're going to make use of that. I feel like we could go land over there if we wanted to, but we're not. We're going to go land right there. This is a really nice aircraft really really nice and an interesting one I mean there are not very many aircraft that were produced throughout the entirety of the Second World War and still in frontline use it says a lot about that geodesic construction of this aircraft the way the aluminum stringers ran through or the aluminum beams ran through the aircraft the Irish sheep flying along with you <laughs> All right, let's see if we can make this landing. Is that an aircraft on the runway? No, no. That's that's the Pappy Lights. It's got to be. I haven't seen any aircraft. 
We'll be fine. Even if it's an aircraft, we're we're a bomber. They'll avoid us. All right, let's make this landing count. Let's scare everybody at Farnborough. So we don't have any brakes, air brakes that is. Why is there a large building at the end of the runway? Who would do that? Who? All right, we cleared it. We cleared it. We're good. All right, we're good, people. We're good. We got this. No pro. Oh, there's rabbits on the end of that runway. Didn't think about that. All right. Ooh, there we go. Look at that, just drifting over the runway. Look at that, easy set down. Brakes are on. Yeah. Oh, we are so pro at this. Look at how pro we are, people. Where's my speed? Am I almost done speed? Yes, I am. Maybe. Woohoo! We made it! We live! We live to fight another day. In our Vickers Wellington. This is a really nice looking aircraft, people. I definitely would recommend if you want a World War II twin engine. This is one to consider. I've done some other ones, but this one is really nice looking inside and out. Check it out. Link is in the description as always. I've been Derek Tebbers. This has been your Flight Simulator X Plane Spotlight. The Vickers Wellington, which we landed without incident. Till next time. I don't know what to say. It's an amazing plane. Get it. Put it in your hangar.